Good evening, this is the Rutland Town Planning Commission and it's February 20th of 2020. Thank you all for joining. Let's start with the Pledge of Allegiance if we could. Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United, United States of America, America. and to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, special welcome to Howard. Welcome Join back, Howard. Again. Yes. <laughs> Way to go. Hey. A while. Yeah. Been through a few things yeah. the last few months. Okay. Um, approval of the agenda for tonight. I don't think uh, anything has changed. It needs to be changed. Move to approve. Okay. Second. Second. Okay, thank you, too. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Uh, no public tonight for comments, so we'll go right down to new business. And we'll start with the enhanced consultation, not to be confused with enhanced energy planning. Um, so that's what I just handed out. Um, I'd like to take this in two parts. Do one that's um, regional planning commissions need to do with towns every so often. And that's the first part. Just kind of a check-in. Uh, basically about the town plan, but a few other things. And then that led me to think, there is so much in our town plan. The second page, or the second handout, the appendix, has just a few of the things that are in the town plan that I thought maybe next meeting or sometime in the near future we look at those some of those and see if there's if we want to prioritize any of those make any suggestions to the select board um, anything like that so but the order for tonight is just to look at this this first part the report the enhanced consultation report and um, this is, this can be an interactive thing. <laughs> uh, this is not, does not have to be final. So if there's some things you want me to take out or um, add um, before we file this with the state, uh, we this have is the time this tonight. The <clears throat> yes, ACCD. Um, th they're the ones that keep track of municipal plans and, and whether they're meeting state goals and, and that sort of thing. The Agency of Commerce and Community Development. So, is the consult, consult, consultation report referring to use of consultants, or is it our? No, we're consulting the the. Okay, I've got right now. I'm going to put on. I need to put on another hat for the Regional Planning Commission. We're consulting with the town um, about the town plan and some other components that we'll bring up. Yeah, so no consultant involved. It's just it's just us. Just a discussion. What's the purpose? Um, it's basically to you know reopen the town plan, take another look at it, um, make sure it has all of the state goals in it, and you know maybe instigate maybe more more movement on what what was said in the plan. I thought it was oh, was it amended <coughs> by statute. We have to look at it every five years or every eight years? It's every eight years. So um, <coughs> the one we have now uh, in the top line here expires in uh, October of 2027. Um, it, the eight-year cycle started again because we and the select board, re we uh, readopted the plan well, in, we in we total. Put in the, well, that's because we added the energy part. Yes, and, and the section on um, the corridors, the wildlife corridors and right, stuff. Right, but any time you open the plan, then it's, it's you resubmit it for a vote, and then it starts all over again, because that's an amendment, basically. Th there's a process. We did not, we had readopted. If you just amend it, if we if we had just gone in and just said, we're just doing the energy plan and, and that kind of stuff, um, that does not restart the clock. Ah, okay. We... Uh, the select board decided to readopt the whole thing and get another eight years out of it. 
So the Enhanced Energy Plan was adopted in, you know, this past October, um, and then the RP, RRPC said it was in compliance with state standards, so that gives it substantial deference before the Public Utility Commission. And then the Natural Resources section was updated as part of that readoption. Now, discussion of training needs of the municipality. I just put these in um, as just ideas. Uh, stormwater, stormwater issues, um, and maybe transportation, because there's a lot in the town plan about complete streets, and, a, and there's a lot about um, recreation, too, mostly associated with, with transportation. So, uh, do those look okay? Any other training needs you think um, you would like to ask of the Regional Planning Commission? Yeah, I, uh, I, I have some concerns. We spent an uh, enormous amount of time and energy on an energy plan, and um, it's there. It's got all sorts of recommendations. And I don't know if this comes under here, properly under here or not, the section. But <clears throat> uh, mm. we're not doing anything with respect to implementation of our suggestions. Yeah. I think it falls, th there's some... And I don't know if that falls upcoming here. Upcoming parts about maybe some of the shortcomings of the plan or how it's being okay. executed. All right. Yeah. I don't mean um, to jump the I gun. I mean, if, if you think we need energy training to get things moving, that's a different matter. Well, that's what I wondered, <clears throat> whether that was something, specifically okay. that's what I wanted. <clears throat> okay. I don't know if it's so much energy training, but uh, an awareness of the um, opportunities to implement um, energy efficiency methods that uh, would help advance the energy plan and the municipal plan. Yeah. So, I mean, the the question is, technology changes at a a pace that is um, staggering these days, and to be able to implement something that is that has an eight-year shelf life, um, with uh, the constant changes in what is uh, available. I think um, would it would behoove us to um, have someone come in, help us look at the um, goals and objectives within the energy plan, and um, advise us about how uh, some of those targets can be met with new and emerging technologies. Because you don't want to be investing in something now that may have a, um, a better return on investment in two years. Well. <coughs> Some of it is just implementing strategies as opposed to specific fixed facilities that could be obsolete. Right, but when we're talking about charging stations mm -hmm. and we're talking about uh, other uh, methods of, uh, of uh, encouraging uh, transportation efficiencies and transportation reduction or reduction in transportation, uh, costs in terms of um, CO2 emissions, those technologies are something that if we wanted to promote, we would need to work with partners and set something up. And I think that that is what would be beneficial in terms of training, because we can then promote those strategies if there is something uh, specific that we could harness to help the residents and uh, businesses in Rutland Town to reach and exceed some of those energy targets. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't have anything specific other than I know that there's a, a body of recommendations that are sitting still. And have, yeah, yeah, have you checked out the rest of the town plan? There's lots of bodies. <laughs> I understand that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, a uh, C, um, review of new required elements. I mean, they are. Um, 
or the, they have been the economic development chapter, which was done the last time we did it, I think in 2016. Um, and then the forest blocks and habitat connector, which is what we That's worked new. on. Yep. That's the new one, yeah. Um, discuss the municipality's local permitting process. The administrative assistant to the select board, Mr. Bill, um, and the Planning Commission, Stormwater Commission, review, approve subdivision applications and stormwater permits and enforce stormwater regulations. I think that's about it for our regulatory <coughs> or our permitting powers. Uh, discuss the municipality's non-regulatory implementation priorities. And I just put in it's, it's somewhat limited um, and if the Planning Commission was so inclined, <laughs> we could advocate for a larger role in implementing the Enhanced Energy Plan's actions, studying the recommendations for Business Route 4, and becoming more familiar with stormwater issues in general. Um, overview of what the Regional Planning Commission can do. Um, it's available as a resource for water quality. This is down num Roman numeral two. Uh, resource for water quality related regulatory requirements and implementation. And it's available for writing grants to fund MS4 and other water quality projects as well as transportation projects. Um, we are currently, the Regional Planning Commission is currently working to support local energy committees um, so this might be an opportunity for the town and by that um, just to give them the help they need, get them going again if they've been lapsing, um, get them together, get several towns together if that works out better in some of the smaller towns. Um, and the Regional Planning Commission will inform the town of any initial work on its regional plan update. Um, which will start later this year. So, Barbara, um, under those, the first two bullets, uh, <coughs> water quality related um, regulatory requirements, that would, if you're d looking at stormwater as a, as a training need, they could probably help with that, correct? Is that what you're saying there? Yes. And then with respect to um, anything related to energy or technology, uh, um, energy related technology, they could serve as a resource for that. So th are those, is it, am I interpreting this correctly that how can the RRPC uh, help? Um, a would address B in terms of training needs, is that? Yeah, when you think of water quality, when you think of energy, ask the RRP, the Regional Planning Commission first. Yep. The staff, right. you know, there may not be the person on staff who is the right. best informed or, you know, can do the best presentation. And they, um, but they but could point us in the right direction. Exactly. Okay. Okay, uh, Bill Madison is the Regional Planning Commission board rep right now. And then discussion of other local and regional issues and priorities. Anything there, the rest, the rest of this gets into the nitty-gritty of the town plan. So is there, of what we've covered so far, is there anything that's not covered there that's, that's maybe not town plan related? <coughs> You're talking about this item C, right? Yeah. <coughs> well, <coughs> you have the, um, uh do you have that well you have complete streets there's the corridor um project with west rutland that we have talked about but that's not mentioned any place else and we're having is that a presentation on march 11th or whatever the next our next no march 12th our next meeting the the consultant who did one of the studies right. uh, yeah i hope he can make it then so if you're looking at a discussion of other local and regional issues i think that that's both a local and a regional issue that's not otherwise identified on this um consultation report so that's the um what is it called the route four business route four yeah business route four um corridor okay um 
at one point, I mean, part of that, there was a, in, in that plan, there was discussion about having a, a bike path that would go all the way, I don't remember, to Fairhaven or someplace, you know, along uh, the lines here. So any type of uh, regional uh, inter-community um, uh, projects that uh, might be worth undertaking would be something that I think we would want to um, you know, identify because if we can get together and get some grant money to, to do that, it may um, help bolster uh, the attractiveness of our entire region as well as um, promoting uh, recreation and, uh, you know, uh, yeah, increasing of... There's, there's a lot to be said for uh, bike path and for pursuing that in terms of pedestrian safety, biker safety. I was never a big fan of bike paths. I rode the, rode the road uh, until Sherman introduced me to the bike path in Rutland City, which he had worked very hard on. And it really has changed my attitude um, about a lot of things. It makes it much safer for me to get onto my regular routes uh, and it's much more comfortable. Yeah. And it's not completed yet. Um, this uh, is the East Creek or? Yes, Rutland Creek. Rutland Creek. Rutland Creek. And the there's another section of it. That's correct. There's another section of it that's that engineers are working on now, planning. And for it. it's just it was it was an eye opener. So yeah. I very strongly endorse what <coughs> Dana said. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So we can talk about this further. The the step to getting something real would be getting on that list, the select board's mm -hmm. <coughs> list of goals and foci or whatever. That's the, they have a list every year that they try to check off. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, down to the, the the town plan part, it was readopted uh, with the enhanced energy and the required components of Act 171, which is the corridor stuff. Um, and then it asks for strengths, weaknesses, and opportunities. And <coughs> this is what I came up with for the report, and we can, you know, expand on this in the future. Uh, economic development, uh, responding to the challenge, challenge of finding qualified employees by keeping the region's two colleges now responsive to community needs, redeveloping vacant lots through infill, and looking for a long-term water and sewer contract with the city to provide more certainty for developers and better rate structures, fee structures. These are all ongoing. Uh, public utilities and facilities strength suggesting that sewer and water facilities be provided where growth is most desirable and studying the costs benefits of extending existing sewer lines um, that would be something that hasn't really not much has been done on that but um, would be a strength if something would be something to be really needed and a benefit to the town um, also in the town plan, suggestions that opportunities for adult recreation be expanded and that development at Northwood Park continue in accordance with its master plan. Never seen that master plan. <laughs> is it written? It sounds like it is. I don't know. Does anyone remember <coughs> doing past town plans? with? I'm looking at Jerry and only Jerry. Maybe Howard. Howard. I don't know. remember anything about I'm, it. I'm not aware of. It could be. It could be a plan. I'm not aware of it. No. Well, we keep passing. <coughs> we keep approving that as an action item. <laughs> mm -hmm. So maybe we should take a look at that. Um, I also I also put in here as a strength the view shed analysis. That's uh, at the end of the town plan right now, but you know it's a, it's really attached to the energy plan. Um, it's untested, new, um, but it should give us some guidance for future development in those areas. 
And the energy section now includes very specific direction for energy development siting as a strength. Weaknesses. The plan is lengthy with numerous is not even the right word. Strategies and mm -hmm. suggestions, I mean, there are scores of them. Mm -hmm. um, it will be difficult for the town to implement many of these since they are not prioritized either. For instance, transportation. The plan reads, currently most land development patterns in the town discourage bicycle and pedestrian facilities. Um, but I don't believe there are many other than that one that Sherman just mentioned in conjunction with the city that there's much being done along those lines. Even though it, the plan is very clear that um, bicycles, bicycles and pedestrians are not really wanted or, you know, helped out. Uh, flood resilience as a weakness. With the exception of MS4 impaired waters, and that would be our, the Moon Brook watershed, new fill construction and infrastructure are not discouraged in designated flood hazard or fluvial erosion areas or in river corridors. Aren't Other they now with the Aren't they now in the new watershed plan though? Yes. Um, so, with the exception of the MS4 impaired waters, which would should cover, I think I think that should cover the uh, stormwater ordinance areas. Um, subdivision regulations do not encourage green infrastructure, you know, rain gardens, things like that, or reducing impervious areas, as called for in the section. Um, natural resources. It, uh, that section advocates for, but doesn't act upon any strategies yet to steer development away from prime ag soils or steep slopes, or uh, it does not create uh, buffer zones along streams and rivers, those riparian buffer zones to prevent flooding. A lot of the stuff it ties into what the state is looking for. Is that really accurate? given the stormwater regulations and the... Um, <coughs> yeah, I mean, I, I could... We, we could put in there except for the MS4 well, <coughs> area. I'm sort of embarrassed because I can't put my hand on the um, language I want but <coughs> or, or want to articulate. Um, but the buffer areas and the regulations that we now are charged this seems to say they're not helpful or they are non-existent <clears throat> and um i don't think that's accurate i mean we've okay got okay i can reword that but but are they limited i mean we, mm -hmm. they are limited right. they're existing but right limited well, what, what the state would prefer is that they would be town-wide you know yeah so, so what this is saying is that what we have isn't enough. Okay, well. Yeah, if you look at what the state's goals are, and if you look at what we say we're doing in the town plan, or what we want to do. Uh, then there's housing. Um, there's a pretty big section on housing um, again, not really acting on the strategies to encourage the retention of existing affordable housing. Modifying the land use map to provide multifamily housing in areas within or adjacent to existent, existing settlement uh, patterns. There's a typo there. Yeah. Uh, promoting the conversion, thank you Norm, uh, and there's another typo, of larger homes to multifamily housing. Exploring the need for a set of housing and rental building codes to protect the health and safety of, I mean, this is stuff that's pulled right out of the town plan um, as action items. And then, <coughs> <Go ahead. coughs> and then providing easy access to resources on affordable housing, um, <coughs> whether it's on the town website or so in, who, who's in the purview? town office building. And whose purview is this? housing overall yeah I think that should be a priority quite mm -hmm. honestly yeah. but I just yeah. want to know whose purview it's is. it's planning so it's part of our purview and certainly part of the select boards 
So that would be my vote for the things that we're looking on here. Because if you don't have housing, you don't have opportunities. And so if we really want to look at <coughs> equitable housing and affordability and the opportunity to attract uh, people to the area, then that's something we should give a high priority to. Yeah, I think, yeah, in, in the other handout, I, ha I put a, added even more things that were in the housing section. <coughs> that's that fine. That we can take a look at. <coughs> uh, if you were asking for, I mean, I made a connection whether that was specifically stated or not, Barbara, but uh, you said something about uh, if you want something to be, to gain attention, it should get onto the 2020 goals focus. We might have missed yeah. the, our opportunity for 2020, but maybe not. Well, if we have a marker, we could take care of it. <laughs> <coughs> Add an eight. <laughs> but yes. So my, my point is that uh, <coughs> if housing is a joint prerogative of the Planning Commission and the Select Board, as well as other entities, perhaps, then we would want that to be a uh, focus <coughs> for some type of dialogue on how to move that work forward whether it makes it to their goal list now or whether we put it on their parking lot list for the goal list for 2021 right. I, I think th that would be my yeah my or vote of things that are on here that are is that that's something that the regional planning commission could help us because you know I I hate to sound pessimistic but it's all about money and yep. oh, yeah. Yeah. and it's you know, in order to, I, I mean, being in the trades, I see people that are investing in this kind of stuff and not investing. And if there's no money to be made there, so to buy expensive property, <clears throat> it's just, it's it's extremely difficult. I'd love to hear somebody's, yeah, you know, idea of, of how they could even begin to suggest that that could be done. Until you attract developers, you're going to, and, and if you, to attract developers means money and means reasonable things, and it just isn't happening in Vermont. So, I'd love to hear it. I mean, yeah. there yeah. are some be organizations that that some nonprofits that focus on affordable housing, and and there's one that focuses on uh, helping people finance their home. I don't. I don't know. I've told you. I've told you more than I know already. Well, I, I, I just I, <laughs> what what you what you see now in the building trades is that it literally <coughs> is is uh, fifty percent to a hundred percent more than it was just ten years ago to do any construction. So because of that, it's just even though the economy started to churn and people are doing stuff. It, 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 I'd, I'd just love to hear what somebody's, mm -hmm. you know, that, that knows way more than I do. I mean, obviously, I just would love to hear that. Yeah. What, what strategies? Because it just seems a, a daunting task to get people encouraged to do any development for affordable housing. And, and one of the things <coughs> I, I interpreted when I looking at our plan is that when we, when we say affordable housing, we mean home ownership as opposed yes. to rental. Right. And that they're, I mean, they're two different pieces of that. Or when getting, you, you or getting landlords it. to maybe, you know, do do a duplex out of a, a larger home, you know, or you know, getting them to do something to create more housing. So a little bit of both. But where the landlord, where the the own owners would be resident in the, you, you wouldn't want a four a four apartment complex that's affordable. In other words, so there's a difference. Well didn't imply, I mean, I, I got the implication yeah. that it was home ownership that would be affordable. Well, and that may be just my sensitivity. Something for us to talk about. Yeah. And well, I think there needs to be a scale of options for people. I mean, <coughs> um, <coughs> young people that might be um, uh, tent uh, tentatively uh, located someplace might want a rental option that's affordable, whether they're college students or whether they're uh, just starting out in an entry level uh, job and they may be moving after a couple of months or a couple of years. So you, you, I think we need to address the whole um, <coughs> spectrum of needs, but I think ultimately if you're looking at growing the population and you're looking at uh, attracting um, investment both in human capital as well as in 
uh, resources you need to be looking at uh, permanency of residence. So to Sherburn's point, that's mm. something that's critical. But that requires a <coughs> that would require a task force to actually um, address. I mean, task force in the sense of a a work group in the town that would be mm -hmm. uh, ad addressing that from an, uh, a, a number of angles. And I think that uh, Jerry's point is well taken, that we should have people from uh, from industry be part of that conversation mm -hmm. so that they can uh, present uh, that perspective. Yeah. Because it's only by bringing those multiple perspectives together that you're going to get something that is actionable. Right. Right. Well, you, you think of the couple of things we hope we're coming to the area of 9L really uh, made it difficult for BJ's for <coughs> instance and then the <coughs> store that was going to go up on Route 7 on Thomas's land mm -hmm. and you need some of that along with it to, mm -hmm. to bring people and, and jobs and but it is something what, what uh, Jerry was saying a, a developer today to get a developer to go in and buy a piece of land and go through all the Act 250 the cost and all the stuff it's difficult it's really really tough so you even existing existing buildings that chain it's just it's cost prohibitive right now it's just mm -hmm. not just because of act 250 you're, you're saying no a lot of things building materials yeah. um and and you know it, to dana's point you know and, and i guess howard's too you have to have you have to have jobs to bring young people here to bring people in there you have to have industry mm -hmm. so it all it all kind of goes hand in hand i guess so right and that goes back to some of the economic development ones getting people here to right. fill the jobs i mean it's just there's so many things in here and a lot of them are interrelated right. um so like what is the priority <laughs> but again the housing will always see this as something that's required in the town plan you know the state's always saying please try to address the affordable housing not too many people not too many places around the state have really found the key to that and there's probably more help for doing downtown development than, yeah. than like where we are right I mean, it's right but they're really pushing and promoting and yeah there's that infill and there's like the um you know keeping development co consolidated and like maybe using the second story of maybe a storefront or something for housing and so there's different ideas out there and again it might be just getting the right people here to come talk to us about it and so okay the last section of the of this report is um, opportunities what would make the town plan more effective make it shorter add a timeline and list the strategies and action items with the highest priority and then possibly assign who's responsible for completing those. Um, i trying to remember why I put regional transportation in initiatives and cross-jurisdictional committee recommendations. Um, I guess just to be aware that we are connected to other towns and there might be some issues. I mean, I, I know there's some committees that the select board has um, that there's an intermunicipal committee where they meet with the city on different issues from, from time to time. So maybe there's some other opportunities there. River corridor regulations, you know, for the rest of the, uh, the town. Um, and they would actually provide the town with more disaster relief when those things happen. Uh, more vigorous support for the development of affordable housing and Norm's favorite assign responsibility for the strategies of the new energy section to a new energy to possibly a new town energy committee well maybe it's not your favorite but I'm sorry maybe, maybe it's not your ultimate favorite but it is something you will have talked about So that's that's the report we filed. Do you have anything you want to go back and add anything at this point? I just have a question. The, this first one, uh, where we say action items with the highest priority. Um, if if we decide to approach this in any way, 
uh, in terms of assigning priorities, would we do this with the select board? Because unless there's there's support and interest at the select board level, what we do is not going to be not going to result in any in very much happening. So yeah, I think what would work best is if we just told them ahead of time, that, you know, would you like us to do this, or just ask them and told them we do have an interest in it. And because there are so many items, mm -hmm. we thought there was a need for it. I think they would say yes. Just go ahead. And that's that's pretty much why I did the appendix, just to give us some ideas and, and the, the, the major sections of the town plan. So I thought in another meeting we could take a look at that and um, maybe everyone can also look at the town plan and see if there are other ones they think belong in that list mm -hmm. or maybe we just take the town plan and look at every one of those action sections and prioritize them maybe do like one section each meeting or something yeah mm -hmm. you know that said something like housing is going to be a lot <coughs> harder to tackle you know so mm -hmm. maybe we want to prioritize the areas mm -hmm. that we concentrate on first too Mm -hmm. Well, anything more on the report? That what what <coughs> happens with this report? Um, it gets filed with ACCD um, along with our town plan and someone up there reads it and says, okay, you know, they're, they're trying. And they're paying attention to this stuff. And when is it due? Um, probably end of the fiscal year, but I was hoping to get it done sooner. We've had this town plan, the existing town plan, since 216 or 217. The existing one only since October, but... Well... 14. W which we... Right. So we don't do this every year. We, but we this is the first time I've seen this. And we, when we adopted the town plan without the energy component, I, I'm not aware that Th we... This is like a check-in, like halfway through the length of the town plan. Just how's it going? You know? Yeah, I think I'm it was not, 14. No? I'm not challenging... And then we did the maps no, the year after. Right. The <coughs> I'm not challenging it. I'm just unfamiliar with it, maybe surprised uh, that we haven't seen it before. But if you're saying it's this is the right time, um, course our, if I, we I take, I know they give us like three towns to do every year. I think they decide which towns. Oh, I see. Okay, so it's yeah. state generated. Yeah, and it's not necessarily statute. I'm quite generated. sure that's yeah. And they give each planning commission three towns. Right, to right. They say, hey, it's about time to. And how do sit we down. make the list? Mm -hmm. Oh, the state dictated <coughs> the regional. I'm quite sure they do. That Rutland Town. Mm -hmm. to okay. It's time I to go visit just was Rutland Town. What the underlying process? We was. hadn't gotten a visit in several years. Not since I've been here. Right. And that's since so that's probably it. They look at the uh, length of time since they've reviewed a particular town, and they just draw that number. Okay. So, Barbara, for next steps, I mean, it sounds like a, a fairly sizable project. Mm. Um, uh, <clears throat> so if, if we're looking to make this more than just a document that sits on a shelf, um, I'm hearing you ask us how we would like to proceed and what work we would like to do with respect to the town plan and set some priorities and then ask the Regional Planning Commission for some some support while we, we uh, make progress on implementing some of the strategies that are in the town plan after we've identified areas. So maybe we should make that, uh, I think somebody else made the suggestion, um, a, a work session that we look at certain, um, certain sections at a time because to take the whole town plan, try to digest it at once, would be a headache, I think, for even the most um, <coughs> uh, the the mo those with the most stamina. So, um, anyway, 
I think that mm -hmm. that would be a good idea. My vote would be to look at housing, <laughs> maybe economic development. The easiest one. <laughs> of course. I, I always like taking the easy things first. That's the easiest one? She's joking. She's giving good. me a hard time. She's Thank God. She's probably going to use the most difficult thing. That's yeah. That's why I'm just telling Yeah. It's like eating things off of your plate. I, I was always good at <coughs> eating the f things I liked most off my plate, but then I had to eat the rest. So I switched my philosophy and started eating the things I liked least. Oh. <laughs> That's worked for you. Still here, so I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so since I kind of sprung this on everybody, why don't we take a look at that appendix? And if we have time, we go the next through time? the town plan. The next time, we'll okay. come up with a strategy. Strategy mm -hmm. the next time. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Um, we had a little minor flurry of things that came in since we did the agenda uh, this mm -hmm. week. And um, one of them was the Rutland City. They call it their master plan. It's essentially their town plan. <coughs> um, it's in draft form. It looks a lot like um, the earlier master plans from the city. Uh, but there is a public hearing on March 11th at 6 p.m. if anyone's interested in attending or making any comments. I have a board meeting that night, so I can't make it. Okay. I'll be in Middlebury. Oh, I took off the RPC hat. Did you notice? I'm back. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Where's that meeting? Oh, I, Hall. Was, I would assume I it's, it's yeah, in the I auditorium. Yeah. Or whatever they call them. The Grand Room. Yeah, I, I just think I saw that it was City Hall. I don't know where in what City time? Hall. Six. Starts at six. Um... Not sure I have a copy of that here. So, um, and in old business, we did um, sit down with a couple of people uh, that work for Andres. Um, Bill did, Mary Beth, and I did, and we sat down with, with two people from Watershed about the Stormwater Interactive map. And so, uh, we had a pretty good meeting. Um, gave them some marching orders and they're going to get back to us in mid-march i think with a, a prototype or something so that's that's in the works they gave us a price it's 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 a little expensive <coughs> so we'll may have to go with pretty much what they come up with and maybe tweak it if we need to as we go along but it's going to use a big chunk of our budget uh, it's gonna, it's uh, like fifteen hundred dollars to get this map ready. To do the interactive map. Yeah. So right now they're looking at. The, they think they can do it with addresses. So the search will be by address, and then um, there will be. Oh, what's the what's the right the right correct wording? There'll be like a pop up that comes up and you help me Mary Beth that says you, you're in the watershed or you're in the watershed and the stream buffer area mm -hmm. and and hopefully they'll also say you know so sections you know two three and four of the ordinance apply to you something oh, like that wow, that's, that's, what mapping will this be it'll be something to be on the town website so people can go in and find out if where they live you know, if it's if it's in if it's covered <coughs> by the ordinance, <coughs> they need to get familiar with the ordinance. And Did they say anything about the fact that not all parcels have addresses? We didn't. Mm. Um, so that you know, and th I think if they run across that, that will come up in the next couple of weeks. They should have addresses to an to an owner, someplace. I mean, so we were thinking. The of question was: addresses. If you're searching on the map, Howard, how do you? How do you pull up an address that doesn't exist? If it doesn't have a street address, a 911, we had talked about that at one of our previous meetings. If it doesn't have a street, uh, a 911 address, how is that going to pop up on a map? It may have a parcel number, but it wouldn't have a street address. So we're not going by parcel numbers, and we're going by the state parcel data through VCGI. 
So let's just see what they what problems they run into. Okay, but it wasn't raised that we we had that same issue when we were doing the mailings, correct? We talked about adding um, names, like calling up a property by you know by, by searching by name. Mm -hmm. And they didn't think that was necessary. They thought they could cover it with the street address, right, mm -hmm. Mary Well, and they would probably know what the closest address is to their property, so it would get them kind of close, and then they could pan, you know, for the few people that don't have actual addresses. And I think there'll have to be a disclaimer. I mean, if you can't get this to work for you... Then contact uh, right. <laughs> Bill. Or if yeah. you don't understand it, you, you yeah. need to come talk to Bill anyway. Well, if it, mm -hmm. if it only works for, peop for street addresses, it's a step in the right direction. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And, you know, right. Span numbers. Every, <coughs> every parcel has a span number. Mm -hmm. No matter where it is, it's... And that's connected to a homeowner, of course, but um, span numbers are used for a lot now and right. all, a lot of the state mapping. Yeah, but who knows their span number? Well, well you need it, don't you, for, for your... It's in, you know, it's in the grand list, and it's, yeah. Uh, yeah. Isn't that part of... I don't know the terminology. Isn't that part of the, 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 the property identification when you apply for that? Homestead. Homestead. Yes, it is. Yeah. It, it's yeah. it's part mm -hmm. of it. So everyone has it. Who mm -hmm. does their tax? Who, who pays taxes? Mm -hmm. <coughs> well, let's see where this goes. It might be an additional way. It might be an additional yeah. way to um, locate the properties if there's no physical address. Some of the new state mapping that they've got out is they're doing a statewide mapping. Having all all towns mm -hmm. and communities and and I think that's driven by span numbers. When you when you go in, you key in a span number on that map. It's a complete state map, but it'll bring you right into that spot. Mm -hmm. um, and that's some of the newer mapping that they're using, mm -hmm. and they're they're moving along with that. And, it's, and it works really well. Yeah. So you know, perhaps they that when you search, you search by your property or span number. I mean, I realize that probably adds cost to what they're doing, but yeah, doesn't seem like too big a deal to me. And you know, any any uh, any property address is going to have a span number attached to it anyway, right? So suppose somebody is looking to buy a piece of property, and th they don't own the property, but they'd like to find out whether that property happens to fall within the um, the watershed then they might use the span number to find out. Mm. So I think it would be more useful than just having the address. Street address. Yeah, but that's just me. I, mean, I don't know how much that complicates it, but it seems uh, logical yeah. to yeah. be able to yeah. search with either. Right. But okay. But mm. Yeah, because when you, this mapping that they've got, when you key in a span number, it zooms right in and it shows you that entire parcel. It just it outlines the whole thing is right there. So and then that someone that looked on their, uh, looked for their street address and couldn't find it, if it said or by span number, they could look and say, you know what, I'm going to have to pull my taxes out right. and see what my span number is and right. type it in. Yeah. Okay, we'll see what uh, what we can do and what they can do. Sure. Sounds good. Announcements. Um, we should have... Hopefully, if the weather permits, we'll have the consultant who did one of the business route four studies here next meeting, Jim Donovan. He did the he did the street smart street smart growth smart growth yeah study. Mm -hmm. um, Otter Creek one Otter, the Otter Creek solar projects mm -hmm. are in the news if you will again um, they, they're trying to add a, a third project site they're they're dividing up what they they already have permission to do two they were trying to divide one into another part and have a total of three um, they're running into some problems with that one of them being that they did not let us know about this 
petition and and a couple other uh, other reasons um, that they tried to take use an expedited process um, with the PUC and didn't like that so they have to start all over again so we'll be hearing more about Otter Creek one two and three why are they splitting it what's the you heard Bill what's like what's the reason they split they're splitting it they're trying to make a bigger project what it's just to just the, the size of the project and it also looks like you know, you know they did so much clearing of trees they're they're now looking to expand onto some cleared land land that was cleared that was like pasture that might be more visible to some of the neighbors than what what they were starting with with the clear by, stuff by dividing I, one of the projects <coughs> into two parts are they kind of expanding I'm sorry and kind of expanding that are they expanding the solar fields the are they expanding the solar fields uh, is it is the sum of two and three going to be larger than two standing alone <coughs> yes I'm right. quite sure well, it says it says there's a applied for is a 4.99 and now they're trying to split it into two smaller 2.2 for a total of 4.4 so it looks like a little bit smaller okay smaller but, but the, I think there's some people who think there might be more panels or the the generation is a little bit less but it, it's it's <coughs> kind of confusing is this really more of a technical adjustment than a substantive one not if it's sitting on areas that people can see more okay but I think that that's probably where the biggest part of that is coming the from. issue is visibility you know yeah I can understand the PUC being upset right um, if it's a technical adjustment for the same or less amount of energy the same you know seems to be a different story but if it's visibility then of course that, that yeah so so that they falls into our crosshairs they, they tried to slide this in through a, a quicker process so no one got to ask him any questions about this <coughs> so uh, you know, we didn't even get the notice and that was one of the reasons why you know, they were told to start all over again uh, the select board got it a couple days before Christmas and didn't really act on didn't know what was in it um, so they haven't come to anyone in town to really explain this or the Regional Planning Commission. And what's that. the, are they going to? Well, if they do things by the letter, we would have more of an opportunity to ask them to come. You know, did they give the 45-day notice? Seems illogical that the state would, uh, the PUC would just allow them to do that without following the proper process. That they seems didn't. crazy. They didn't. They dismissed well, it. They caught They them. said, they, they, you know, they, start they, all over. So they're they're back to just the original two. Okay. That gotcha. had been approved. Yeah. And that's what's supposed to happen when these kind of things occur, correct? Yeah. 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 That's good. They're back to the original two at this moment, but they're asking for two to be divided into two and three and now they're going through the proper procedure right, right. allegedly yeah <laughs> and somewhat related we we very belatedly have the mylar for the isovolta uh, right away um we looked we approved this in august yeah, it's been a while yeah <laughs> so it's it's a little bit beyond the 90 days but we um Bill has spoken to them, asked them about, you know, why there was a delay, and we were thinking that maybe it was because there's, this is an international company, and it's a little more complicated, so unless anyone has a real objection, I, I'm planning on signing this and filing this tonight, even though it's way beyond the 90 days that we require for Mylar, but, but this is a well, the Scandinavian company and <coughs> with with offices all around the world and yeah, but I'm I'm concerned, uh, and I'm not all that familiar with the procedure, the 90-day procedure you're talking about. Where is that 90-day limit? It's stated on our. Um, it's in this case, it was a boundary line adjustment yeah. we did for them, right. so it's on our permit form. Right. That. So our permit requires that 
be filed. The final plat has to be submitted within 90 days of our approval. Right. Our permit says that, yes. The permit says that. But we approve the permit. And it, do we have to waive something <clears throat> to now accept it? Um, no, I'm inclined just to say, t to say that, you know, thank you, we have it and we'll file it. Um, we understand that they're... Well, I'm concerned about not this particular thing per se, but the precedent for the future. Right, of course. And if we have to go through something to waive that 90-day, or should think about, waiving the 90-day requirement, we ought to do that before you sign. Because once you sign it, then we have a harder time saying no the next time, at least theoretically. <clears throat> how so, well, what is the explanation? Is it? Or how many days has it been? It's been six months. It's been 180. 182 days, I think. Oh, I was off by two? Uh, so the attorney that brought it in uh, yesterday or day before yesterday, mm -hmm. really recently, uh, I, I called when, when I realized how much time it actually passed. I called him back. I said, "Well, here here's the issue. So it's in the subdivision regulations, the 90 days. I couldn't find anything that says any process to waive it. It could it could just be simple as a motion to say, go ahead. But it's but, not it's not a subdivision. No, it's not." It's it's giving them access to about that much property on the corner of the on the corner of Windcrest Road is, is all. And they is they moved the line to do right. that, right? So the Isa Volta is is the is where the delay was. That's the company that owned the property that Ecos Energy wanted access to. <laughs> like Barbara said, they're international. They're and to, they had to find who they had to figure out who was authorized to sign these this paperwork on their behalf and then find the person literally where in the world is this person and there's two of them they had to find get it to them get it to the next person and get it back it just so isovolta had to give the authorization for the boundary line adjustment to yes, occur yes it was their property in order for the other person to file the, the solar project so the, it's the not person is the, is the solar is the solar project Right, the Otter the Creek. Otter Creek. Otter Creek yeah. <laughs> um, they're the recipient. It's it's their right of way from Windcrest Road, so they don't come off of Cold River Road. It's their it's their right of way off Windcrest Road, which they thought was town property, turned out it wasn't. So they had to go to Isa Volta, and it just it, that's what you said. It just, it just took time to get to the two people and get the paperwork back and make it around where everything was. So it's it's only the the ninety days is only on our permit application. That's the only place it shows up, and we we probably verbally mentioned it to them in August when when we moved to approve the boundary line adjustment. But it's nothing in any of our regulations, because the subdivision regulations just say, well, there's this thing about boundary line adjustments that the planning commission can can look at, but it doesn't. Didn't, if you remember, that's why we came up with that new permit, because there's no definition, um, no... But the application <coughs> has... Process. The, the, the 90 days on the, it. The application form. Which they saw. Mm -hmm. It says 90 days. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say what happens after 90 days. Do they have to go through a second hearing? It, um... I can go look at it, but I, I think it might say that it becomes... It, it I, I, that, that's what I, that's what I thought. So to, to Norman's point, um, I, I, I would make a motion to um, actually, I'm not going to make a motion. I'm going to have a discussion first. I want if we. Is there is this time sensitive now before Barbara signs this? Uh, they can't. The the developer can't start their construction on the road until they have it filed. <laughs> so they want to start their construction process. And they need to have access to the, they need to have access to the property to do it. So right. And when do they want to start? Do you know what the 
uh, uh, timeline I, is. I don't, I don't know. It's probably tied into their their third <laughs> project very, very, as well. well. That goes. This goes back to the original two. One and two had that as a requirement anyway. Right. That the land clearing could happen off Cold River Road, but the, the actual construction right. was off Windcrest Road because they didn't want construction traffic up and down Cold River Road. Right. So the requirement was to come off Windcrest Road. But they didn't have the right of way. We didn't. We don't. Because we, the town line stops at w railroad tracks, and they this is a PI, this is past it. So, so that's that's where this whole thing evolved from. So our 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 application says. Uh, final approved plats shall be filed by applicant with town clerk within 90 days of approval or such approval expires and the applicant will be required to restart process. I am asking this group for a special exemption for this in this case. Don't, I don't want to make this more complicated uh, but Shouldn't we just amend the permit to extend the period that they can file to X amount of days so that <coughs> that they, that the, um, if we did it that way, then we would increase the window, they would be in compliance, and we wouldn't have to be making anything up, making a policy up, or doing an action for which we have no regulatory basis to act but I think we could treat their request as a, to amend the permit issue an amended permit saying it, for good cause shown they have uh, the, mm. uh, the, just period of, the period of time to file the plat is extended to whatever day you want to file it is, is the paperwork in order is, is <coughs> It was it was approved. I mean, it wasn't. This was a very short process because right. it was literally just moving a property line to give them access to. Right. I remember the meeting. It was it was yeah. that was the yeah. quickest. So, um, I, to, to to your point, I don't know if we can amend it because we can amend it. I don't know if we can. There's no there's no uh, there's no language in the subdivision ordinance about boundary line adjustments other than it's not a subdivision that's all there is so right. we took the 90 days mirroring the subdivision 90 days purely because of the same timeline that's that's was an arbitrary decision because subdivision 90 days this was 90 days i'm not sure if we can change their application after the fact we you may be able to change it for them going forward but i don't know i mean it's it's a i don't know that we're changing the application is we're just amending the permit upon their request to file, impl implied request to file late. Um, mm -hmm. So if they, if, they, if they reapplied, what would be the harm in that? I mean, I know there's a timeline, obviously, but I just think that when does, when does a, you know, it's kind of like the, uh, I don't know, it's just, you know, a lot of state laws like the, the, the disposing of household waste, there's no, there's no, there's nothing that any, it just doesn't seem to matter. So this seems to matter. We have a date here. They didn't meet it. I, I mean, part of me is always one of the people that are more forgiving than almost Absolutely. anybody here. <laughs> as far as let's just let's just move forward and pass right. this. This is a this is a person from Rutland Town who's been here forever. And let's move forward. These are not people from Rutland Town, and they don't seem to be following any rules. You know, <coughs> I, I'm not not saying that that's. I'm just saying they don't seem to be following any timelines. Mm -hmm. We set them one, and they didn't they didn't meet it. I, I just, I don't think that's being bad. It's being you didn't you didn't you didn't do it right. So why should we why should we allow this to just move forward? It's it's nothing to Isa Volta. <coughs> right. It's it's a it's a business that didn't do the things properly. When you know, we, I don't know. So if we ask if we said, I mean, everything is in order now. Yeah, we could have we could have a hearing or whatever, and it could be filed at our next meeting. Correct. Right, it's just a simple delay. Yeah, no additional well, signatures required? They have, they, have, they have to do the application again. I mean, it would be it be starting over as a new application. What, what's, Which, what, what's the filing fee? Sure. I, I don't remember. It's $15. What, what, 15. What's the downside of our doing what Barbara suggested? I mean, I, I mean, it sounds like, it really sounds like we're just going to delay them because they didn't follow our guidelines. 
and it so and and it sounds like there that they really had an issue in getting signatures that they needed. Hmm. So you know, but the only thing I I, I disagree is that there uh, is how do do we know that it was signatures? Do we know that they were waiting until they saw if the state was going to approve something else? We really well, don't know that it just had to do with signatures. Isavolta is the one that caused the delay. Ecos is the one before the PUC for this. It's 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 the. The, the, company the delay the right, the is not the one that's applying to the state for the project. I I I'm good. I I'm good either way we want to go. I just it just seems like we it, it would be we we very commonly kind of you know uh, give kind of this this pass away and it just seems like you know maybe this one of those cases that it shouldn't be. But I'm good either way. Whatever the anybody past, ultimately. Others, others have had to come back in. I'm, and go through the whole process again, as I recall, in the past, because they missed the 90 days. Well, that's I mean, I have two things. One, if, if you're suggesting that they have to start over completely. I, I, I'm not suggesting. I'm suggesting they I, do whatever's appropriate, not necessarily. I, I don't think that's clearly. appropriate. I think if they write us a letter and ask us to amend the plan and state, uh, amend the permit, so that they can file this out of time, I'd feel more comfortable granting it. In my opinion, Norm, that's way more complicated than it needs to be. I think it's filling out a piece of paper, giving us the plat, and having us go boom at the next meeting. And that's if that's as simple as it is, I'm with Jerry. Let's have him do that. That way, everybody follows the prescribed plan. I, I, I feel for the people who had nothing to do with the, um, the, the, um, the delay, <clears throat> but if we create guidelines because we're trying to ensure integrity in our process, then we need to follow our own I guidelines. agree with that. See, that's, that's all I'm saying. It really has nothing to do with who they are, what they are, what they're doing. It has everything to do with where, when do we make a guideline and actually well, follow it every time. Keep what Howard said. Is that others have had to start on boundary line adjustments as well? I'm not sure what it was, but I remember it. it was, I don't remember who it was. Somebody. There was one up past the hospital where you take the left up there. That the, he's the he's the town he's the chief of the fire bar, police department. Or Dumas. yeah, there was a Dumas property which right. turned into a total redo this, redo that, and I think that we we had to follow certain guidelines and ask them to do that. I don't know why anyone else for a, right. a, a yeah. one one meeting delay would be right. a big and deal. I don't think it's a big deal. I, I think and everything is already set. We've got all that we need. Mm -hmm. It's just a question of going I just uh, think through the procedural know, steps to make sure that it's done properly. Maybe maybe I misunderstood you and maybe I'm being I haven't quite shed my history yet. But all I'm suggesting is that a simple letter asking us to waive it and saying that delay was caused because of the internal complications is all we would need to amend the permit. And, and they if can send us the filled out it, form I'm that's sorry? just as simple doing the second one ra rather than asking for a waiver of something that's already and It's started. certainly but, not but about $15. But, but we have to, we require them to come and be at the next meeting. Or a representative. Or yes. So you're asking yeah. for an entire new permit application as opposed to just amending this one? Is that what you're suggesting? I don't know how you can amend something that's already been um, that has already expired. I mean, you have an expired license, you can't use it. If you have something else, you can't use it. <laughs> I, I'm just, I, I'm, I'm trying to see what is the simplest way for us to be able to resolve the issue and asking them to write a letter or asking them to come in for five minutes. Somebody's here locally, correct? Uh, no. no. No, I don't think so. I think the, the ones that came here that night were all came here traveled here for that for the for that purpose mm. yeah, they're not the people, the people that work here are not the people that make these decisions and we but could make this letter this waiver letter binding right we would just amend the permit to say that they have the permit is amended to permit filing of the plat required uh, beyond the 90 day period and that, and we'll just, and that way there's at least a basis for it. Otherwise, we're inconsistent with what I understand to be our historical practices, which is maybe it'll never come back to haunt us, 
but it's not a good it's not a good but but what but they're just filling out another application isn't that we're still in compliance there's no inconsistency <coughs> and it seems more straightforward than, Except, than having a letter a hearing required and a complete new submission well, the submission's not a, com you say it like it's complex, it's probably easier than writing a letter. It's just a copy of what they've given us, with a new date. Dana? I don't think we need to have a whole team of people fly from wherever they are to here. We can do a digital meeting, they can be present on FaceTime, um, uh, just like Andy would do, and whoever is local can bring in the new application, or they can send it to us, to be present for the hearing. They don't have to be physically in the room. We can put them on a uh, digital device. They can have the paperwork in front of us and we can execute it. Isn't the, is the, the permit is from oh, yes. this, this group. They're not, it's not from Isa Volta, right? Right. 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 Isa Volta is, is, is the selling, the, the selling party. They're, they're, they're the, the ones that had to boundary. agree yes. to this. They're, they're agreeing and to the boundary. They're the ones who filed the permit that expired. Yeah. And they're the ones that filed the Mylar. All right. And you who, know, who signed the application, Isa Volta or the other company? Uh, I think Isa Volta was the applicant because it, it, it was their property. It belonged to them. Yeah, yeah that, that from mm -hmm. what I, if I remember correctly, that took a while before they initially they didn't want to do it, and then they did ultimately agree to it. I, so I agree that perhaps that would be easy, but maybe not if they're in yeah. eight time zones exactly. away from here. So exactly. I, I I see the complications. I think the, I think the company's out of Denmark. Yeah. So. Well, Mary Beth. That's two a.m. I mean, I can see the point of you know moving forward. You want to be consistent. We don't want to give, you know, waive something for them and then have someone else file it. You know, one hundred and eighty days um, instead of ninety. Mm. But it's it does seem like making. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure. It's so much easier when, of course, when people are local. Bill just gives them a call and says the 90 days is, you know, is right around the corner. Yeah, fast approaching. Uh, or like in the case of the Rob Sean place, you know, do you have your state permits yet? Because we made that contingent, and I mean, it's just it's just so much easier. It just this was just this really got lost in the. We have everything Corporate now that is, that is, um, that is in compliance with our. Um, that's that's it. That's that's what we needed. Me, if you go look at the mylar, I mean, it's just. That's a sliver of land smaller than this room. Yeah. It's not. It's not a. That, remember that yeah. old. It is literally that smaller than this room. Yeah. Dana. Yeah. Dana. Dana. And Jerry, I, I don't frankly care which way we do it, whether it's through an amendment or through a new permit, as long as we have a basis to file the MILAR, which according to my understanding we do not have now. They're late and we have no procedure uh, on the books uh, to just accept it today. So perhaps, okay. perhaps so one, either, either way is fine. I mean, I, I don't care as long as we have something of record that says it's late and we grant it. And why couldn't we use this waiver letter in the future? That's other instances. I think we ought to come yeah. up with something we, we, that says we can or can't do it. We ought to come up with something that's on the permit or some procedure for the future we ought to come up with. Yeah, like since, you know, it's not written into the regulations this a form that we came up with mm -hmm. maybe we can just change the form in the future i know it doesn't it's kind of messy with this particular instance or add language like um may be required to submit a new application you know or so will be. If, yeah <laughs> yeah well maybe, so maybe changing it from the 90 out. days yeah. i don't know that's true that's true what do you think I'm thinking that we just make an exception for the complicated <laughs> situation that we have here yeah. and not change anything. And so I'll make a motion <laughs> to accept the um, Isa Volta 
boundary line adjustment that corresponds to the mylar that is present before Barbara and that we accept that as a uh, valid um, pr uh, request to the Planning Commission to make the boundary line adjustment in spite of the fact that the uh, application for the boundary line adjustment expired 90 days ago or approximately 90 days ago given the international complications with this particular situation. Second. Thank you. <laughs> Any discussion? <laughs> we may be discussed out. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, my motion is not to, uh, to create any uh, precedents right. <laughs> with respect to the um, application materials and our expectation for uh, people to be able to meet the 90-day requirement. This is just an exceptional circumstance uh, that happened as a result of uh, yeah. international uh, property owners um, having uh, difficulty securing the appropriate um, signatures to move forward with the project. The whole thing has been kind of confusing, like who owns what anyway, as well. Maybe we will recognize and uh, offer an extension in the future if we know that we're dealing with international uh, entities that right. may have difficulty. If, if, it's, if it's an extenuating circumstance, if someone is ill or something, I mean, we may do that. Yeah. We don't want to hold up a project that is beneficial to the town as a result of another entity not being able to comply right. with the 90-day uh, requirement. I think that that's... I think we're fine legally here, right? I'm going to vote against it. Okay. <laughs> because of those reasons? <laughs> because it's not legal? <laughs> for us well, well, do we have, do we have a quorum? Because I don't think we have <laughs> anything before us <laughs> yeah. from the applicant uh, re requesting it or in our regulations that permit us to do it this way. Okay. So I'm going to vote against it. Okay. Any other discussion? I understand that I'm being picky. <coughs> I'm trying to be careful. I'm not, you know, I'm not angry. <laughs> uh, Good. It's okay. I just think it's a matter of appropriate procedure, and I doubt that three weeks is going to make a big difference in slowing down this project Oof. Uh, under Oof. The, these circumstances <coughs> and with a new and with a new application for the project anyway <coughs> uh, pending before the or to well be it's probably already written but I'm sorry it's probably already written um, I'm sorry we may even be late for that I mean it's that is probably already been written even though it's just dismissed but you know, since they've already agreed to this, no, 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 no. He's 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 either? talking about what they were turned down. Oh, yeah, on that the oh, third okay, one, okay. Yeah. third site. Yeah. Okay. But with another, my point was with another project pending in some form, we're expected to divide this two into two and three. By by asking to proceed the way I propose, um, isn't slowing anything down because they can't go anywhere anyway. Well, I think they're trying to write up. They're probably trying to write up an application, and, and they probably probably want to say this has been cleared up. They do have the right of way. You know, that little triangular piece is probably being being used now. <coughs> they, they, they agreed to it. Yeah. They knew it was coming. I wouldn't right. be at all surprised that they're they're working in yeah, using that know. Like their access. I don't know. Okay, are we ready for the question? Is it seconded? Yes. yes. A motion by Dana and seconded by Mary Beth. Um, that we accept the Mylar as presented and because of exceptional circumstances 
um, including international complications that we generally accept. We, we were receiving as the part of the um, application for the boundary line adjustment that we were approving the boundary line adjustment because we approved it previously um, contingently <coughs> and now this has come in it just came in after the um, uh, there, timeline and there could be one more small discussion since I was one of the biggest opponents <laughs> of it I just want to say that I I will be voting in favor of Dana's um, because I am just, I, I just wanted to get it out there so I didn't look like a chameleon. The only reason I'm doing that <laughs> is it's erring on the side of um, common sense. And and I think that that's why I'm doing that. I just wanted to say, since I was one of the people who was saying, I don't think so, I don't think so. So well, anyway. I was right there with you too. <laughs> What's that? I was right there with you too, so. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying, you know, it's just erring on the side of common sense. Yep. I, I see yep. the logic once we had a discussion of why this should probably <coughs> move yep. forward. So anyway. Any other discussion? Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. Okay. okay. Motion passes. The motion does pass. I'll go peel it. It was, <laughs> what, six? Five to one? Six to one. one, two, six to one. You don't vote unless it's a make or break a tie? No? Is that the way it goes? No, not necessarily. Oh, okay. Okay, the minutes. Let's wrap up here with the January 30th minutes. Uh, um, I'm sorry, Barbara. I, I know this, this is going back a little ways, but you kind of caught me off guard and went really fast. Fast the... Um, we did something fast. Yeah, well, we did. <laughs> um, no discussion? <coughs> no discussion. I just... It was on the... Um, uh, Rutland City Master Plan, mm -hmm. and um, I wasn't I wasn't clear what we were planning to do with that. Not much, just other than to tell you it's out there. It affects, of course, surrounding towns. If you want to read it, and uh -huh. their hearing is March 11th. Okay. So it was more of an announcement. The, there, the reason that I, I, I read through it, there's really nothing really new in it that would like grab our attention or, or, or you know, get us to think that wow, we should we should look at that one a little bit closer. That may very well be, and I um, I, I I looked at a few things. I just skimmed it because it's like one I couldn't read that much paper on a uh, read that much on a screen. I just. And I had asked Bill if he'd just make a copy for me. He said if he needed to, if we were going to be doing something with it. Um, I printed out a couple of areas. One focused on um, the uh, age of the population. Two focused on housing needs. And three, uh, job uh, creation. So based on the three things that we were talking about with respect to the select board, housing, economic development, um, we, we and the um, inter- community collaboration it, it might be worth some of us anyway uh, looking at what the implications might be for some of our components of the municipal plan in Rutland Town and, mm -hmm. and I'll volunteer I can't believe I'm doing this <laughs> uh, I'd, I'd volunteer to go through and do a, a bit of a um, an analysis of where there might be common points where we might want to articulate that, but I'd just like Bill to print me a 100-page copy, I guess, of what I'm going to be reading over the next three months, because I'm not going to get it done next weekend, I can tell you that. <laughs> so if, um, if, if that would be beneficial to the group, I would be happy to uh, pull together a, a, a summary of some things, areas where I think we might um, have uh, points in common. Does this sit here? Yeah, that's the whole thing, yep. There you go. Oh, wow. Yeah, mine. <laughs> it's not that big. It's only 95 pages. It's not that big. Oh, it's only 95? Yeah, 95. Oh. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Bill said 100. So. It'll take me 95 days. <laughs> yep, there you go. One a day. <laughs> okay, thank you, Barbara. Okay, I just, that's... If, if you want me to do that, if you don't want me to bother, then I certainly won't. But. It's up to you. 
I would say, it, you know, it's a pretty, like, this is a final thing. They're probably not going to want to open up no, I'm anything. Not looking, oh, I'm not okay. looking at them opening anything up. I'm okay. just looking to find out if there are areas of overlap with some of our uh, priorities in the municipal like plan, like extending the could, sewer system, right? For like example, that. so that we could we, we could collaborate. Oh, um, if we're talking okay. about setting priorities, mm -hmm. we might be, I might be able to glean something from that that I would put together and say, here, look at these. I think it's this section, that section, another section of our municipal mm -hmm. plan. We might want to um, uh, we might want to take that into consideration while we're looking at uh, work with the uh, Rutland. Uh, Regional Planning Commission. But Good, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> now, can we do the minutes? <laughs> Absolutely. I just wanted to make sure that. Yeah. Yep. Norm. What? We're on to the minutes. Okay. <laughs> where are the typos? Any suggestions? Yeah. Where are the typos? I'm sorry. Where are the typos? There's one. Oops. Oh goodness. <laughs> Try to behave myself. Um, Motion to approve the minutes. I think Mr. I'll Hall's second. name was oh, left no, out. No, I can't. Sorry. I have to see what that wasn't here. Left out where? Uh, in who was present? It's there. Yep. Jim Hall's there. And he Who's was. Wait I'm looking at the wrong minutes. Excuse uh, me. January thirtieth. I'll, I'll second Dana's motion. Got two seconds and oh, I mean, he, he can't. He wasn't present. Oh, okay. Oh, that's right. I didn't. I didn't find any. I didn't find anything either. Wouldn't you? Awesome. Got a piece. But if you'd like me to look again, that's okay. okay. Uh, online <laughs> uh, under the announcements, there there's a. Um, uh, state approval. Second line. State approval has not yet been received yet. So. Uh, there needs to be a period and then a s it's a second sentence. So, comma, approval for filing is being held until it comes through. So you can delete the word It makes it much clearer. Has not, much. has not yet been received or not been received. Or, yeah, either way, but. Touche. Fix it however you like, Bill. So, motion to approve the minutes as amended. As amended. I'll second. And you'll second that, Jerry. Okay, we're we ready for this question. All those in favor? Say aye. 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 Opposed? I'm going to abstain because I wasn't there. Two abstentions. I also am abstaining. I think we're fine. Okay, minutes approved. Anything else for tonight? <coughs> Just a motion to adjourn. Yeah. I'll <laughs> second. Okay. Boom. Thanks. Oh, here, here, here.